see that ortho means to correct, to straighten up the biology in consideration with the knowledge of the somatid. So somatid in orthobiology is a new theory, is something new in the field of biology, which was the new uh, out a major breakthrough in terms of microscopy at that time. That Mr. Nissan's somatoscope is probably a tool halfway between the old model of the optic ma microscope right. and the new arrival of the electronic microscopy. If maybe we could just have a look and look at the underlying principle okay. of this tool that we have called the somatoscope. Maybe we can just look at the screen. Wonderful. Here we have a sample of uh, fresh carrot juice. Just to show you the variety of colors that we find in the different natural samples. This Here is carrot we, juice. Yeah, carrot juice just taken freshly from the carrot, All right. put between slide and cover slip and we'll look at it on the somatoscope. Now the colors that we see here uh -huh. are natural colors. These are the uh, pigmentations found in the carrot juice. The emolymph of a dragonfly, which is another type of live sample, just to show you the okay. variety of yeah. samples that we find in, in the nature. Colors are mm -hmm. uh, very clear, and uh, are a bit forms are a little bit different, but the idea here is just to show you that in every sample that we're looking here, in the live form, mm -hmm. we are always seeing the little dancing particle in the background. And now on the screen we have here the picture of a live, of live blood actually. Now, for now, I think it's only important to check the little dancing particle. It's the, yeah. the thing that we want to show at this point. The tiny, tiny the part. tiny, tiny particle that you see that's dancing around and mm -hmm. it's just have a very special movement. Of course here we see the blood cells, but in a, another uh, program we will have the chance to mm -hmm. explain more in detail uh, how does the blood look. Now here we have a very conventional picture of normal blood. You can see the red blood cells and the white blood cells. Mm -hmm. Now on this right hand, a half of the picture. Now we can see the image of a live blood. Now we will see later on, I will comment uh, a wider picture a little bit later on, but the important thing here is little dancing particle, this little mobile, very motile particle that we see in the background that flows in the plasma and, and we will see blood uh, that has, it's a sample of fresh blood here, and uh, we will probably comment on blood cells because, yeah. of course, we have the somatids, but the nice... Tiny particles. Yeah, the, the tiny, tiny particles. little dancing particles right. that we have just uh, identified previously. Mm -hmm. But here, you'd, all these nice clear circles here that we see, very yeah. clear, very round, are what we call the erythrocytes. These particles are commonly called red blood cells. There seems to be a lot of them. There is a lot of them because this, this is probably the cell that we have in our body in a very much numerous quantity. Now, here we can see that the membrane of this red blood cell is very clear, very refringent, very, uh, okay. and this is because of its content in hemoglobin. We know that the red blood cell has one purpose, mostly to deal with gas exchange either to pick up the oxygen from the lungs, bring it to back to the cells, and mm -hmm. to return the metabolic waste product, which is the carbonic acid. Actually, here in the center position, we can very well see a white blood cell. Actually, it's a neutrophil right. from the family of leukocyte, which we call commonly the white blood cells. Now, mm -hmm. the, this type of cell, this one purposely, is very much involved into the bacterial infection. So this one is just like sneaking around, sniffing to see if there's any type of foreign body in the bacteria uh, family that uh, he could just sense. And if he sense, this particle is just being grasped and being digested. Different types of uh, white uh, blood cells. Yes, right? actually, you're right. We have various types. This one you see here are usually uh, the highest population of white blood cells. Usually they represent 60 to 70 percent of the population of our white blood cells that we have in our body. You see here the nice movement that we see. Uh, the white blood cells sorts of throw away the parachute, brings all the viewers. Uh, we have here uh, platelets, which is another type of blood cells, mostly involved into the coagulation process. 
this type of blood uh, cell is very important in the event if we cut ourselves oh. or if we broken up right. uh, any type of our uh, capillaries or vessels. It just creates a clot. They're very small. The, the platelets are They're way smaller. Easy. Yeah. They're not as easy to, to recognize. Right. Yeah. Usually it's uh, so it's, you know right. very mm -hmm. brilliant spot that's moving around. This is the famous particle that was discovered by Mr. Nessens and that he has called the somatid. Now, one interesting to, thing to see here in this uh, diagram, and interesting and very important for viewers to understand, this, these, what we're seeing right now, are images. They're not true pictures of what we see in cultures, but this is only right. a tool for us to understand a guideline. what a guidelines to see what, what's happening. You know, mm -hmm. the pure culture of somatid, which was a very tiny particle, as we have said previously. Mm -hmm. It starts to be a very, very simple particle, and progressively it goes into different forms, evolving progressively from a very simple particle into a very more complex figure. This was something that was very uh, revealing to Mr. Nessens that every time he started the experiment, the forms as they come always happened in the same pattern. The bursting of the mycobacterial form. We see here that there's a bursting that brings into the environment new little particles for a first time. Again, at phase 16, at the mycelium form, we see another phase that we call a bursting. The first phase, mm -hmm. Mr. Nessens has seen that these forms pretty much look like bacteria. They were shaped like bacteria. It is not a true yeast, and same as the mycelium form. Mm -hmm. Quick look at the structure inside. You see at the middle position, this bacterial like form, a little bit like a rod shaped. We can almost right. see the... Uh, Oh, it's you see, changing. it has just changed, and this is in real time. We just here have a glimpse that of it. That's an example of a change in form, the pleomorphic oh, uh, process. Now, here again, we will see that this particle will be capable again of changing its form within always according to the same membrane. It does not necessarily divide. So, after all, we see that pleomorphic changes are always an extension of the membrane that is there. It's just a change in the structure, which with exactly what we have seen with the somatids. Now here That's we have the same, exactly thing in the same round structure, as you can see, has divided itself into tree, tree structures, and now it pretty much looks like a clover leaf here. Right. And eventually all these parts are going to separate, and they will start to float and do what they have to do. They will again start their own pleomorphic cycle. So this, I think, is a pretty good example for the uh, people to understand what are we uh, suggesting by the pleomorphic changes.